United Nations team of experts warns the crisis in Yemen is complex and that the situation is aggravating. Healthy militia continues to block humanitarian aids and deprive millions of Yemenis from access. The Dorian forces take up furious fighting against healthy rebels in Hodeida while the rebels continue bombing civilian houses. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is the English news with me, Roshan Fouad. United Nations group of eminent international and regional experts described the situation in Yemen being extremely complex. The conflict in the country remains intractable despite persistent international and regional efforts to reach a ceasefire agreement and launch a peace process. The theme indicated that conflict parties in Yemen have continued to commit violations of international humanitarian law. Further, the team expressed concern over the state of chaos in the country, which has made it difficult to share information with the panel or even grant consent to the use of data. The new UN envoy to Yemen, Hans Granberg, met with the Kuwaiti permanent representative to discuss peace efforts in the country. The diplomats discussed recent developments of the Yemeni crisis and possibility of Kuwait to push for reviving the peace process in the country. Kuwait, through their ambassador, Al Qatibi, renewed their support for the UN efforts aimed at ending the conflict and reach a comprehensive and lasting peace in Yemen. The war in Yemen seems to have no end. People are suffering on a daily basis due to the humanitarian crisis. What adds to the people problems is how this block access of humanitarian aids. This report has more on that story. Since 2016, Yemen has been in the midst of a civil war. Since that time, it has been called the world's worst humanitarian crisis in recent times, according to the United Nations and other organizations. About 13 million people are facing starvation, and 80% of the country's population, or around 23.2 million, require humanitarian aid. This conflict is destroying the country from all sectors, starting from the infrastructure, schools, roads, bridges, hospitals, and homes. They are regularly hit with bombs, particularly from air raids. This is also causing major human losses. The international community has been doing great efforts to end the conflict in Yemen. This came on the heels of a proposed peace deal in March 2021 from Saudi Arabia, but because of the Houthi rebels, this proposal was rejected. According to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, 20.7 million people remain in need, including 4 million internally displaced people who need food and nutrition, shelter and medical support. In response to that, the UN has called for $4 billion in funding to support 20 million people in 2021. Yemeni people keep suffering as millions of internally displaced Yemenis live in makeshift shelters in urban and rural areas. The needs of the Yemeni people are simple. They want to go to the market with enough money to buy food and to educate their children rather than send them to work, fight, beg or having to marry them off. The governor of Hodeida, Dr. El Hassan Tahir, met with the representative of the International Red Cross in Taiz. Mr. Christopher and the Deputy Humanitarian Coordinator in Yemen, Diego Zorella, and his accompanying delegation. The meeting addressed the urgent humanitarian situation in the city. In Hodeida, El Hajrufa village was subjected to bombing by the healthy militia that resulted in the destruction of citizens' homes. A new wave of displacement from El Hajrufa to El Haima occurred due to the healthy continuous violations against civilians. Joint forces deterred strikes of Houthi militia in Hais after carefully monitoring movements of the rebels in the area. The military media of the joint forces reported that the Iranian-backed militia resumed their helpless attempts to set up defenses. Houthi militia's non-stop bombing and violations towards the Yemenis has caused a huge displacement problem in Yemen, especially in Ma'rib. The following report has more details on this issue.
The number of displaced families from the south of Ma'rib due to the Houthi militia's bombing of the Rahaba district center has risen to 261 families, in addition to the destruction of public and private homes and facilities. The executive unit for managing the camps for the displaced in Ma'rib said that the number of displaced families during the past two days has risen to 261 families, which are equal to 1,827 people. The unit's monitoring and documentation team in the city also monitored civilian casualties, in addition to the destruction of a number of homes in public and private facilities and the injury of a number of innocent people, including dead and wounded. She stated that her team monitored grave violations carried out by the Houthi militia against the displaced and the host community in Rahaba, southwest of Ma'rib which was subjected to systematic and deliberate bombing by the Houthis, which resulted in casualties among the displaced and the host community and the destruction of their properties and homes. The unit said that the intense indiscriminate bombing of the Houthi militia in Rahaba is still going on, which leads to the continued displacement of families residing in the targeted villages in the district. According to the unit, the families that fled to the Naba'a area and were displaced within the district are 85 families. 55 from Jabal Murad, 62 families from Ma'rib, 42 from Al Juba, and 17 from Harib. The Houthi shelling with missiles and drones on residential areas led to the burning and destruction of 28 houses, killing two civilians, including a 75 year old, and wounding nine, including five women and a child. The bombing of the areas of displaced people and civilians also resulted in the killing of two civilians and the injury of 12, including four women. The unit demanded the prosecution of violators of the rights of the displaced and their inclusion in the lists of war criminals, and the issuance of fair sentences against the violators of the rights of the displaced. It also called for compensating the displaced in their right to life, property and personal belongings and protecting the displaced from any other violations that might be committed against them. Coming next. Health is conceiving information about COVID-19 pandemic and the fears of third wave spread. Sources in the Electricity Corporation in the city of Aden said that the electric current went out of service after most of the generating stations in the country's temporary capital ran out of fuel. The sources added that the emergency fuel that was pumped into the power stations at the beginning of this week ran out, while appeals to the government are not yet responded to. Most public service sectors have been affected by war. Aden is facing an increased in sufficient water issue. People are having hard time due to this. The following report has more details on this story. Water services provided by Aden Water Corporation is insufficient to meet the needs of people. Poor performance of water pumps led to life difficulties, especially in mountain areas such as Sha'ab al Aydarus. Some people were forced to fill water through private water providers, where it exceeds $10 for a single refill. This considered a burden due to difficult economic conditions. For more than six years, we've been suffering from water scarcity, as we have to buy water with large sums of money. Water reaches some areas, and some areas do not reach them at all. We demand compensation. Also, salaries are not paid, and prices are rising. We do not have the financial ability to cover our basic needs. Citizens 
tend to use outdated methods to get few liters. This child gets up early in the morning to get his usual share of water from mosques and return back on the back of his donkey. Yet, those who do not get up early to catch up their chairs need to buy water from private water providers. When we have no money, we have to fill water in the early morning from public tanks in the regions and mosques. The non-constant flow of water in the pipes in a number of areas does not mean the end of the problem. Citizens await water pumps to fill home water tanks. This makes them in a state of constant monitoring as a result of the irregular pumping process. According to citizens, suitable actions are required. <laughs> We have been suffering from water cuts for more than four years. We use donkeys as means of transporting water. We ask to consider our case, cooperate with us and save our youth. The water crisis caused death. Disputes occur between neighborhoods due to using high-powered pumps that draw water to areas and weaken it from other areas. This requires intervention of authorities to find solutions and end disputes. In the neighboring areas, when there is water, they use high-powered pumps and draw the water completely to their areas. This cause conflicts between us. Five people died due to water problems and the conflicts that occur because of water. We want a solution that satisfies everyone and ends the suffering. Water has been out for years. We don't have a single water drop. My husband passed away while he was trying to collect water. The water crisis is added to other problems such as electricity and the scarcity of oil products. People of Aden hope the Riyadh agreement will end conflict between parties as to help citizens who are suffering hardship economic crisis and the deterioration of basic services. Emergency Committee approved the package of measures to confront the third wave of the coronavirus that Yemen is currently witnessing. During its meeting, the committee directed the suspension of official group activities, events and instructed local authorities to take the necessary measures to limit gatherings and social events and raise the level of awareness among civilians. Further, Education Office in Aden suspended regular studies in the university next Sunday due to the outbreak of a third wave of the pandemic. The National Committee Against Coronavirus announced the registration of 37 new cases in seven governors. Committee officials said on Twitter that 11 cases were recorded in Hadramaut, 9 in Al Baida, 9 in Ma'rib, 5 in Aden, 2 in Al Dala, and 1 in Shabwa. Also, a death were recorded plus 32 recovered cases. With the current updates, the total confirmed cases are 1,267, including 1,549 deaths and 5,119 cases of recovery. While the entire world has been trying to combat COVID-19, healthy rebels continue to conceal reality of the pandemic. Many people have died with no single action taken by the rebels authorities. This report has more details on this. The emergency committee of the Yemeni government announced that it had recorded the highest daily death toll from the emerging coronavirus in its regions, bringing the cumulative total number of cases to more than 7,000 cases as part of the third wave sweeping the country. However, international reports say otherwise. A few days ago, the American Associated Press published a report on the extent of the outbreak of the corona pandemic in northern Yemen and said that Houthi-controlled areas are witnessing a third outbreak while the group's authorities are dealing with the epidemic with frank denial to the extent that this denial threatens greater risk to the already vulnerable population. Doctors say they are forced to falsify the cause of death on official papers. Vaccinations are viewed with fear and there are no limits or guidelines on public gatherings or funerals. Human rights organizations and Doctors Without Borders have previously talked about the outbreak of corona in northern Yemen and the dangers of the Houthi authorities continuing to deny the pandemic and endangering the lives of the medical staff. The Houthis decided that they wouldn't announce the infected cases and that they would only announce the recovered under the justification that they do not want to cause panic among the population in the areas under their control.
but this justification had a significant impact on finding a quick and appropriate incubator for the spread of the virus, which led to an explosion in the number of cases, especially in Sana'a, which is densely populated. In view of the Houthi militia's policy of concealing the reality of the epidemic, the only source to know the true death from the virus are the grave diggers, because it's the most segment that knows and notices the increase in the number of dead. The militia rebels have seized the phones of all the doctors of Al Thawra governmental hospital in Sana'a under the pretext of preventing them from filming corona cases in the hospital, intimidating them by refraining from talking about the epidemic. Further, the rebels prevented journalists and news channels from visiting Zaid hospital and Kuwait hospital in Sana'a. The Houthis consider disclosing information about coronavirus cases in Sana'a a crime of national security and treason that may lead to execution. Doctors said that the Houthi militia is forcing them to mix with patients in emergency departments without any protective clothing from the virus or safety measures for patients, as in all hospitals in the world. This made some medical staff stop working. Sources at the United Nations said that the Houthis are withholding the results of the tests and sending the World Health Organization to those whose tests results are negative and not infected. Such inhuman acts by Houthis refrained many infected people from going to hospitals or informing anyone for fear as this is considered criminal conduct with three years prison as punishment. All what Yemenis are asking for is their basic rights to live safely in their own country. Is it too much to ask for? The central bank asked the oil exchange companies and financial transfer networks to suspend sale and purchase of foreign currencies amid the new historical collapse of the Yemeni rial. According to sources, the Yemeni rial has lost its value against the foreign currency. Exchange companies in Aden created a new black market to buy foreign currencies from citizens. According to eyewitnesses, foreign currencies are bought and sold in Aden, in food stores, bookstores, pharmacies and others, amid absence of regulators. Here is a reminder of the main headlines. United Nations team of experts warns the crisis in Yemen, complex and that the situation is aggravating. How the militia continues to block humanitarian aids and deprive millions of Yemenis from access. The joint forces take up fierce fighting against Houthi rebels in Hodeida, while the rebels continue bombing civilian houses. This is the end of the news. It was Roshan Fouet. Thank you for watching.